Ah, uh, hello, my friend. Certainly. Another bowl? Normally, I decline, but I do hope to learn something interesting from the cuisine in this place. The cook's reputation really does precede her. And it does smell terribly good, doesn't it? He dips a spoon into the bowl and lifts it to his lips, anticipation apparent on his face. His eyes go wide and his brows furrow, then fall slack. He smiles. Delicious! Not to mention illuminating. Thank you. A most vile incident. A valiant warrior against the boy. I see many lizard folk around out and about. Killed by sorcerers, a most vile incident. <laughs> a valiant warrior against the void. 
Ah, hello, my friend. Sir, I suppose one more bowl. Garvin tastes the stew, then begins spooning it into his mouth. He sighs with pleasure. His eyes go wide. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 Something isn't right. I need to go move. I don't feel so well. Occupied! Oh, unholy hells! How about a little? Oh, that's what I get. Bloody tainted stew. Makes a little. No, oh, fish into some of my stew. Bloody mackerel must have been tainted. Save me, Lucian. Out of my way, quickly. Gas you, go away. Place smells like the cross, damn death fog. I swear someone must have crawled up in me and died there.
Where is his head? Speak! Dead! Rock, take him! Buzzards use him for a latrine! His head? I want to look into his eyes! My boy is dead! My... my boy is dead! The snake! He takes the head in his hands and gazes into its lifeless eyes. He tenderly strokes Garvin's head and a sad smile crosses his lips. May maggots bugger you for all time, my dear boy. But you! I have nothing left to offer you! Someone took the last of my things, my, my, my good thing! I feel the pull of the hall. It's my time at last. Gods, I hope I'll meet my boy again. Maybe I'll get to look him in the eye when I take his head from him again and again and again. This shrine fills you with your skeleton is still. The spirit of a black ring weaver looks down at his corpse in dismay. He notices you approach and challenges you in a throaty rasp. You're not one of those blood things. Who are... <clears throat> you look the part, I suppose. We had orders to take the island at any cost. We had spells and charms that were supposed to protect us from the death fog. They didn't work. Half of us died crossing the water. Me and some others just barely made it. But then these blood beasts attacked us right away. A few made it away. I didn't. Orders. We were told they'd work. No reason to doubt that. One of my comrades used source magic that saved the rest of us. The death folk already but my lungs. But I made it ashore.
The spirit urgently passes a hand across the spines, whispering each tome's title as she comes across it. No, no, it isn't here. This is impossible. You, my sister, help me find it. There is little time. This is no time to feign ignorance, my friend. The Doctor's arrogance may end us all. He has released a dark presence upon us. It must never sing the taming. The hymnals must be destroyed. And yet, I see no sign one was ever here. You must help me look. Her hands fan furiously across the tomes like a pianist's upon the keys. the guardian flames and reveals the vaults. I shudder to think what may happen should their captives be freed. I have presided over this archive for many years. The hymnals were many. How could I not notice their absence? You must be feverish, though I wouldn't be surprised. Dr. Dava was surely ill to risk all that he's built here. Now be silent. Your questions vex me and I have no time for idle chatter. She hushes you with an index finger held to her own lips and continues her search. Tangled amongst the mounds of corpses are glimpses of fractured spectral forms. Pleading eyes, grasping hands, wailing mouths. A chorus of cries and moans coalesce into a single mournful voice. We hear your footsteps. You move like the living. Come closer. Why have you come here? This island is nothing but pain and blood. We cannot help you with such things. We are beyond it, but you have questions. We can feel them. Ask. We are beyond help. There is only pain. 
We were scholars, priests and priestesses. We sought to study the evils of the world so that we could defeat them. Instead, we were consumed. A dark force erupted from within an innocent whom we had tried to help. It made this island its own and killed all that it found. Sister Cleotha, rest your spirit. The spirit of a man in priestly robes drifts from corpse to corpse, head bowed. He murmurs blessings over each of them. Merciful Seven, smile upon your fallen servants. Brother Ashwell, Brother Triscoll, Sister Revria, usher them forth to the Hall of Echoes. He notices your presence. Sorcerer, this island is nothing but death. You should leave. The statues guard the vaults where we kept those who were beyond help. No ritual could cleanse them of the dark forces that infested them, so we sealed them away. We did not use such cruelty lightly. There was no other choice. The statues guard the path. They will grant passage to those who sing from the hymn book, from the archives. I am well versed in such things. I, my brothers and sisters, study the wondrous, the arcane, the malignant, easier to fight evil forces when you understand them. Corrupt things have long stalked the fringes of our world. Demons. Here we sought to help those who fell prey to the foul creatures. He casts another rueful look over the mounds of dead. No more. The spirit utters a sigh. Even after having parted from his body, he retains a heavy heart. This island was once a place of learning, of healing. We were Rivalon's sword and shield against the demons who preyed upon the weak. One of our number, a doctor, brought an invalid before us. An elven maiden who had become infested with some presence. It was powerful. Too powerful. So we sealed it and the poor elf it inhabited in our deepest vaults. Sometimes incarceration was the best we could muster in such dire cases. But the doctor who found her was determined to make a name for himself. He attempted a cleansing ritual, but he only served to strengthen the demon's grasp over the elf. The demon possessed him. Soon the whole island was overrun with monstrosities and bathed in blood. Our blood. It's a corrupt place now. No good thing has cause to be here. A spectral mass lies before you. Not one or two beings, but parts of several. Slaughtered together, then left to rot without care or ritual. Disparate glimpses of pain and horror drift past you like a fever dream. A limb is rent from its socket, accompanied by a hollow, ghostly scream. A robed woman crawls away desperately, her face a mask of terror. A sage old dwarf holds his own innards in his hands with bloody bemusement. A ghostly aura rises from the butchered corpses half-formed impressions of panic, fear, and pain. No single voice rises from the cacophony, perhaps thankfully. Sister Cleona, rest your spirit. How can you bear it? The spirit cocks his head and covers his ears, hoping to muffle screams that only he can hear. The ancestor tree. The screams came to me on the wind. Though I am not sure the devil's breath that perturbs the air here can rightly be called wind. But they've been silenced. Well, yes. 
I have kept my ears to the ground, ghostly they may be. This is an archive, a library devoted to history and scholarship. There must be a record there of the elf that spawned the corrupted tree. I can't say where its entrance lays. The whispers that speak of the archive are all but drowned by my ancestor's grief. A druid. There are too few of us. Elfkind finds value in flesh where memory lingers. I collect memories, yes, but I am more keen on bark and leaf. On the living breeze, not the sleeping past. The spirit of a black ring defiler swings her ghostly blade at invisible foes. She turns and shouts to unseen comrades. Her voice is a guttural snarl, ruined by the effects of death fog. Go, find the druid. We need to find out what he knows. I'll hold these things off. She turns back and cleaves her sword through the air. It makes contact with something. The echo of a bestial roar catches your ear. You might expect the stone figure was welcoming you to the island. Looking closer, you notice the statue's clerical garb, so similar to that worn by the ghostly priests bonded to the isle. An unlikely coincidence. The flame still burns, and the statue still stands. Even a triple-sized trop...
What's that smell? Something delicious. Very clever. Blazing blue flame seems to singe your finger the moment you touch the statue. Somehow, though, the flame still burns and the statue still stands.
The blazing blue flame seems to... The flame still burns and the statue still stands. The spirit looks around with wild panic, clawing through its spectral mass with fevered nails. The demon feeds! The demon feeds from the ring! The demon protects! We must know what the demon protects! The demon has an advocate! The advocate kills. The demon has a secret. We must know the secret. Heaven and all the saints. I ne'er dreamed I'd be grateful to be lying cold on the ground. I'm finally rid of that demon. Finally rid of that bloody voice. Not much more than you've been told, I'm afraid. She made a deal with some mighty dark forces, and now she's looking for a way out. I'm not sure that even my voice knew the terms. It was all very hush. Suspicion is she's promised to give up something powerful, though. Tree's spirit embraces its putrid host, an elven ancestor lost to the same demonic disease that infects all of Blood Moon Island. Qui, Manduk had omnio myrdos ects, 
It quotes potest else. Your hand passes through the spirit to rest against the corrupted ancestor. It is rough to the touch, save the pustules dotted across the bark. Yet there is nothing to divine but rough bark and swollen pustules. You cannot say which elf spirit inhabits this tree, or how it came to suffer its second death. A moment passes, then you feel it. Clarity. You speak my name. You know my torture. Please. Don't judge me for the sickness my roots have spread. I can be free. My soul cleansed. The demon has gone, but I am still its slave. While it lives, I am bound by its shackles to this humble plain. Yet you awakened me from nightmare with a single utterance, my name, and I'm grateful for that. How amazing that a name can wield so much power. Remember this lesson when you leave Blood Moon Island. The demon blackens another land now. It possesses the very doctor that liberated it. Speak its name, however, and you expose it. You weaken it. You'll know him when you find him. A doctor that accommodates a demon doesn't see patients, only victims. Destroy it, and you free me to the Hall of Echoes. Destroy it, and my roots taint this isle no longer. Now come closer. I'll say the demon's name only once. The spirit's voice is a harsh whisper. Adramalik. Naivety. Stupidity. Call it what you want. I wished to put the source within me to good use, and demonology seemed as good a use as any. Silly me. I meant to summon an imp or two. Instead, I ended up hosting a damned archdemon. The roaring in my head. The craving for living flesh. Urges. Good gods, the urges to kill. To hurt. The stronger they became, the harder I fought. And at some point, I was just gone. Deadened. But not dead. And then, awake. On an isle I'd never been. Encircled by faces I'd never seen. Watched by a man I'd never known. They called him Doctor. He shouted strange words, and the demon bellowed. Then, one by one, I... They fell. I watched my own hands slaughter them. I tried to resist, but I couldn't. And then a final roar, when the demon rushed away and into the only one still standing. The doctor. That was my last living memory. The demon may be gone, but its disease still infects my roots, birthing evil into the surrounding soil. While it lives, I am still its rotting servant. I've suffered. The Isle has suffered, but you can end it.
It is a dark thing to contemplate a demon's name. Perhaps you can shed light on the matter. Jahan looks at you utterly flabbergasted, but soon an air of serenity descends upon him, that of a chess player overlooking the board. A drama leak. You have to admire his cunning. To think that in his guise of Deva, he and I shared the finest wines in the realm. Stories of the women we have loved. Thank you, Godwoken. You have done me an unparalleled service. And you've quite humbled me at the same time. You must go your path, I mine. So that I may confront the Archdemon in his lair. In the great city of Arx, please accept this token of gratitude, and fare thee well.